Tomorrow marks 20 years since the terror attacks of 9-11. It changed our country in ways that we could not even imagine. And it certainly changed the life of our guest today, Army veteran Ryan Wimpy. Ryan, thanks so much for being here. I really appreciate your time. I, I had truly the honor of meeting you a couple of weeks ago. You served tours of duty in Iraq and Afghanistan. And I just wanted to have you here today to talk about this anniversary and what we have seen play out in Afghanistan over the last couple of weeks. So let's start with 9-11. Tell us where you were when those attacks happened and just your recollection of that day. Sure, Myra, and thank you for having me. I really do appreciate the opportunity to speak as a, as a veteran of the global war on terror. Uh, so I was actually a bright-eyed, bushy-tailed 18-year-old uh, freshman at the United States Military Academy at West Point. I was on my way to a computer science class when I heard cadets talking about um, a plane hitting the towers. And then I got to, got to that class and we watched it live, essentially, the towers, the towers burning. And that was uh, pretty incredible to go from basically a peacetime reality to, to very quickly realizing that my class and so many of my classmates and upperclassmen, as well as members throughout the entire armed services, we're going to be engaged in what would become essentially the global war on terror. When you graduated, you were right into that war on terror. You had a tour in, Af a tour in Iraq and two in Afghanistan. Tell us a little bit about the experience you had in both of those countries. Sure. So I went to Iraq uh, for 16 months as a 23 year old. I came back when I was 25, essentially. Uh, it was it was essentially in Sadr City doing a counter IED or counter bomb roadside bomb. Uh, job as an intelligence officer. It was it was a very demanding uh, role. Uh, and then I came home, refit for about a year, year and a half. And then I went uh, to Afghanistan uh, to Kunar province, which includes the, the infamous infamous Korangal Valley. And we were there for about 13 months. I came home a couple years later, I went back. Um, this is after the surge and essentially was part of the drawdown in uh, Kandahar, as well as uh, Urzgan. I was with the contingent of uh, special operations folks uh, there on a base with about 70 people is all. And we were essentially partnered and working with the Afghans every day. Uh, and then I came home after nine and a half years of, of service. My wife was still in the Air Force here in San Antonio. So I decided it was time to uh, to put family first and, and hang up the uniform. And you talked about how when you were in Afghanistan, your your unit, your division was experiencing the majority of what you called the significant activity, fighting the Taliban, fighting Al Qaeda. Uh, what was that like for you to live through that? Uh, it was incredible. I, I like to tell people that, you know, very quickly in this sort of transnational reality of the world we live in, you can hop on a flight and descend down Maslow's hierarchy to, to the basement, basically. Um, and there's sort of this beautiful thing that goes on when you work with people in impoverished countries that you know, you break bread with them, you work with them on a daily basis, and you help them realize to some degree what life could be like. And so many Afghans had experienced what life was like prior to the Taliban. And so when we were there, it was very kinetic. It was the height of the surge. And we partnered um, with our Afghan brothers and sisters. And, you know, we saw a lot of gains, frankly. Uh, and I'm very proud of that. And I, I always tell veterans, you know, like, no one can er erase the light you, you've sh shown on a place. Uh, it doesn't just go away. Uh, and like I said, I always tell veterans to hold their head high, especially now, especially amidst this withdrawal and all the sort of craziness that has uh, transpired. They have so much to be proud of, and I, I hope they just focus on that. What has it been like for you in the recent weeks as we've seen this chaotic withdrawal of the United States and, and other allied forces from Afghanistan? Did you know people personally that you worked with that were able to get out? Just your experience in watching this all with, with the rest of us, but having been there. Yeah, and, 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 you know, I'm not trying to put a somber tone on this, but this is the embarrassing and devastating part. You know, I have interpreters that I worked with and partnered with. They still have family members that have been in the special immigrant visa uh, pipeline for years, uh, and they're still stuck in Kabul or other places throughout Afghanistan with no clear way uh, to get out. And, you know, as I put more and more time between my time in the service and, and the here and now, you know, I'm a, I'm a veteran and a father. Um, you know, I have a little girl. So for me, <laughs> it, it's, it's incredibly emotional to think about what's going on with women in Afghanistan right now. Uh, regardless of your political affiliation or anything else, uh, the Western world has largely been silent on this. And uh, 
you know, we have so much to be proud of in our own democracy. We have a, a minority female vice president, for example, but it just pains me to no end that, that I haven't really heard her talking about uh, the humanitarian issues and the, the sex trafficking and everything else that's now going on in Afghanistan. I mean, that's really, that's really awful and heartbreaking. Uh, and it's rather tormenting, frankly, uh, as a veteran. All that to be said, I still get to gratitude. I still think about the service and sacrifices of so many of my brothers and sisters in arms. And again, I'm just, I'm just very proud to be, have been a part of that all volunteer force uh, that wanted and stood for change and affected change. Um, so that's what I focus on. We could spend so much more time talking to you about your experience and about all the different aspects and the way that you've served this country. And you were, you were, you know, fortunate enough, or we were fortunate enough to be able to talk to you for our Case That Explains episode, reflecting on this 9-11 anniversary and Afghanistan. So I want to end with that. When this anniversary comes tomorrow, what will you be thinking about? Uh, well, actually, I'm going to be spending tomorrow with Vet Strong, Myra. Uh, I'm going to be at the little plug here, 219 Tampico Street. Uh, I'm not going to try to be too somber, frankly. This this organization, Vet Strong, is collecting furniture and housewares for home, homeless veterans that are transitioning into a, a more uh, permanent state, as well as Afghan refugees. So that's how I'm going to be sending my Saturday, uh, is with veterans and with my family, and just focusing on, on doing and focusing on the positive. And I'm actually looking more forward to September 12th, frankly. Uh, that's the day that, that I like to, to sort of dwell on, if you will, and say, you know what, this is the American spirit. This is us coming together as a collective and standing for what we believe in. So that's how I'll be spending it. 219 Tampico Street with Vet Strong, an incredible organization. Ryan, thank you so much for your time, for your service, for the way that you've served all of us. We really appreciate you sharing some perspective on all this today. Thank you for the opportunity, Tim and Meyer. I really appreciate it. Thank you for your service, sir. We'll be right back.